Well, good morning, welcome, and thank you for joining us, everybody. My name is Dwayne Henderson, a member of Cree Lighting's training and education team and host of our e-learning series. For those watching live, happy Wednesday. Quickly about the session. Uh, the session will, will be 15 minutes in duration once we get started, and our presenter will be available for Q&A at the end of the session. Although the attendees are muted, we do encourage you guys to use the chat box and Q&A box to uh, ask questions throughout the session, and we will circle back and grab those at the end. As you know, Wednesday is our industry-related content. In today's session, we will gain a better understanding of LM80 and TM21. And to walk us through that, I'd like to welcome back John Vollers. Uh, good morning, John. Good morning, Dwayne. Hi, my name's hey, Jonathan. Before we, get, before we get started real quickly, John, can you just talk really quickly about your role in the business and then we'll get going? Yeah, absolutely. So, hi, my name is Jonathan Vollers. I'm the technical manager at Cree Lighting and, and mainly focused on lighting qualification. Uh, which is really support for DLC and Energy Star uh, qualification, and then uh, running our photometry labs, which are accredited, which helps supply a lot of uh, great data to our customers. Perfect. So today, let's get started. Great. Uh, today we're going to talk about LM80 and TM21, and those two uh, documents kind of go hand in hand, and we'll talk more about why as we move forward. <clears throat> So what is LM80? LM80 is an Illuminating Engineering Society uh, Laboratory Measurement, so LM, procedure for luminous flux and color maintenance of LEDs. Uh, today we're mainly going to talk about luminous flux, but it does also monitor color as uh, we test LEDs uh, through that process. An example here on the left is uh, a high power LED. Uh, you can see how it's constructed and just get an idea of the, the component level that we're talking about. And on the right is a mid-power LED, and that is has a little bit different construction and used for different, uh, different applications. Uh, you also see an array up here. Um, these, in general, you might argue are right around the high power be about a dollar example for an LED, and then a mid-power might be about 10 cents, just to give you an idea of scale and what they might be used for. But ultimately, the procedure itself approaches the LEDs exactly the same way. So the procedure, the goal of it, is to accurately measure LEDs over lifetime, and this is continuous testing. So when you're going into the LM80 process and you want to you want to take a new LED and test it, some of the procedural controls that you need to approach are to understand how is the LED gonna be used? What temperatures might it be used at? So in this example here, we have maybe 55C, 85C, or even upwards of 105C. We wanna understand where the temperature measurement point is gonna be, and uh, sometimes also called the case temp or T sub C. Uh, and then what drive current do we wanna have uh, running through the LED through the, for, through the different test cycle? So um, all those things are important to establish prior uh, to the test procedure. And then when you actually install it, run it, uh, you're going to test the LEDs at time zero or, or uh, T equals zero. Uh, and then you test them at equal intervals all the way up through a minimum of 6,000 hours. And then you can test longer, but you have to test at least 6,000 hours for each component, uh, each LED that is tested. And every time it's measured, so time zero, uh, 1,000 hours, 6,000 hours, and such. Uh, it's gonna, you're gonna measure the flux. Now that could be luminous, photon, or radiant. And all that just means is that, you know, normally we care about luminous flux, and that is what visible light is. So uh, we're gonna care about how the LED is producing visible light used for lighting applications. Uh, and we also check the color coordinates, you know, what CCT the, the product is, and then there's something called VF, which is forward voltage. And that just kind of monitors um, how well the LED is performing and understanding what type of LED it is over the different test uh, intervals. So uh, down in the left here, we can see an example of an LED and where that TCP, TC point might be. And the goal there is that that point is accessible once it's installed in a lamp or a luminaire and we can measure it the same as during the LM80 test. So, and then on the right here is an example of what the data might look like in an LM80 report 
where you have the different LEDs that are being tested and at the different intervals, what luminous flux uh, those, that, those LEDs have at the time. Now, so we've generated this data. Now, what do we do with it? And this is where TM21 come in, comes in. And this is the paired uh, document that goes along with LM80 to basically utilize that data. So TM21 is an Illuminating Engineering Society's technical memorandum, so TM, uh, and it's per, for projecting long-term lumen maintenance of LEDs. So uh, an example here on the left is a calculator, which is, the TM21 tells you how to build this calculator. And that calculator then can do this projection that we're showing on the right here. And that has these little black dots or triangles uh, would be the data points that were tested. And then here's the projection of what that lifetime is gonna look like uh, through hours of operation. So kind of how do we do that? So the calculation goes in and, and is the TM21 tells you how to do it. And general, we utilize this calculator and it creates a decay rate. And basically what's really important about that is we need to align whatever the temperature that the LM80 was built at, so, you know, or tested at. So ambient temperatures being 55C, 85C, or 105C, where the temperature measurement point was, and what the drive current was. So effectively, this is mirroring what we did on the LM80 process, because uh, we're trying to use that data and have it be applicable in the real world. So what we now do is take that, uh, we install this LED in our lamp or luminaire, we attach a thermocouple right to the TC point, just as was in the LM80 process. And you can see an example of that here. And this is on our OSQ outdoor fixture or area fixture. And this uh, thermocouple is attached to this XHP70 LED uh, in the same spot that was denoted here on this picture. And then we run what's called an in-situ temperature measurement test or ISTMT. Uh, and in situ just means in situation. So effectively, we use L, uh, excuse me, UL 1598 or UL 1993 as guidelines for this in situ temperature measurement test. And for 1598, we use that for luminaires. So, and all that really tells you is that if it's a wall mount or a pole mount, like an air, this area fixture being shown on down on the right here, you know, put it on a pole and measure it. At an, in a controlled environment, and then you'll get the data you need out of it. If it happened to be a troffer, uh, we would put it up in a fake ceiling and possibly put insulation over it. So the goal here is ultimately to just test the lamp or luminaire in the situation which will generate heat in the real world. So that's all we're trying to do is replicate that in a lab environment to then take that into our calculations. So once we've done that, so now we have our LM80 data and we now have our in-situ temperature measurement data. So we have the lifetime projected information and then we also have what we're using it for. So our lamp or luminaire, how is it gonna run in that environment? So the calculation will look at, you know, the data points that are generated and it'll extrapolate out beyond that time that was actually tested to some hopefully longer distant future. Uh, it utilizes the last 5,000 hours of data. So if you had tested all the way out to 10,000 hours, it would look at from 10,000 back to 5,000 hours and it creates that projection. And what this line is telling you as it runs through here, uh, about 85% of the original light output, it's showing it, it would be at about 23,000 hours for this particular example. So that's called L L85 or the lumen maintenance at 85% equals 23,000 hours. And then here, as you see it go down to what would be considered L70 or 70% of the light output, it, this example shows that it would hit, be right at about 50,000 hours. So those are terms that are pretty common when we're talking about projecting lifetime. So L70, L80, and even L90. And these are all important uh, terms to understand, but also there's some rules around that. So 
uh, when you report out uh, these projections, they don't want you to report too long. So they have some rules regarding if you tested X amount of samples in your LMA process, which is in this case, say it's 20 samples or higher, you can multiply the tested length. So if it's 6,000 hours, you'd multiply by six and you could project out to 36,000 hours. If you had between 10 to 19 samples, you could only project out 5.5 times the tested length. So here on the right now, we're gonna look at a calculator and how does it use those? So we're taking the LM80 data, we're taking those conditions we talked about. So we have 20 LEDs used, all, none of them failed. We tested for 12,096 hours. Uh, we tested at a drive current of 1500 milliamps. Uh, and then we tested at 85C and 105 and 105C. I'm only showing the 85C, the, the 105 is off magically in the, on the right there. And then in our in situ temperature, where we actually put it in a lamp or luminaire, we're saying we, met, we tested it at, or we ran it at 1500 milliamps. The LED case temperature came out to be about 100 degrees C. And we're looking to understand then how does that projection look? So here we see that at 50,000 hours, the projected life or the L, uh, the lumen maintenance factor of that product would be about 98%. So, you know, really, really strong product, has a very low uh, degradation over time. And it's, you know, showing even upwards of an L90 here, we're showing an L90 here of greater than 73,000 hours. So quite a long life on this product. So this is all the work that a manufacturer might do to get ready to present this data to our customers. So how do we do that? So what is, what is this data used for? Um, you know, obviously we build our spec sheets and try and communicate what our lifetimes and how the performance will change over time and at different temperatures. Uh, we also utilize this data to support Energy Star submittals or Design Lights Consortium DLC submittals to get our products listed for rebates or incentives. And, but one of the, probably the most important thing that we do is we generate these uh, lumen maintenance factor tables. And this kind of explains when you sell this product or this product is being installed in your particular application, you now have an idea of, of what to expect from it. So in this instance on the left, we have a KBL, uh, which is an indoor high bay fixture. And you can see here, because it's a high bay fixture, the way we've created that table, we have 25 C all the way up to operating at 50 degrees C. Obviously pretty hot, maybe an industrial environment, uh, you know, a lot of machines below the LED or the luminaires. And so that product is gonna run differently over time as, so we're trying to project out here and use this data to showcase that we might at, you know, say at 100,000 hours and at 40 degrees C, we'd be at about, we're estimating that we're gonna be at about 75% of the original light output. So this is really helpful in planning for, you know, maybe when luminaires need to be replaced, um, what the typical application is, how long these, these items will last. And then on the right here, we have an example of our OSQ fixture that we showed earlier in our testing. And obviously an outdoor application really is typically gonna run maybe at a 15 degree C. And so it's much, running much cooler, which we know is going to perform better. Most LEDs perform better at a cooler environment. And we're showing here uh, an asymmetric and a symmetric. And those just happen to have two different LEDs those tip, uh, those optics for this product. So they actually report out a slightly differently. And in this, in, you know, this is still performing at about 95% of its original light output at 100,000 hours. So really stable product. So these are some of the ways that, you know, which a manufacturer can take an LM80 and TM21 calculations and utilize it to communicate to our customers of the expected lifetime performance and also just communicate out really the reliability to some extent of the product and what we expect from it. Thank you.
Do we have any questions, right. Dwayne? So, yeah, you want to go to the next slide, John, and we'll open up for, yeah. for questions. If you do have any questions, please use the, the chat box or the Q&A box. Uh, John, I think I'll start real quickly just so to, to kind of align the LM80 information, and that's something that the, the chip makers will run those tests, right? So we don't run those types of tests. And then TM21 is something that manufacturers like us will use um, the data from an LM80 report and, and in-situ temperature information to, to kind of make some of these predictions, correct? That's correct, yes. And then the other thing, I think most of the audience knows this, but but maybe for those that might be jumping in that might not be as familiar, you use the term L70, L80, L90. Do you want to just real briefly talk about what those are? Yeah, so so L70 is just a, a, a mark of, it's the lumen maintenance or the lifetime expected when the lumen maintenance reaches 70% of the rate of, you know, of the initial light output. So. Uh, and then the L80 would be the same thing. It's just at 80% of the initial light output or L90 would be 90%. So it's just a term that's used to quickly represent at what time would the luminaire or lamp be at that uh, percentage of the initial light output. Okay. And we got a, we have a question and, and I, one of the things I had down as, a, as kind of a note was, you know, lumen maintenance data does not equal system life uh, data. Um, Trying to find the question here about well, maybe talk real quickly about about system life versus versus uh, the um, life projection in terms of lumen lumen maintenance. Absolutely, yeah. So, so again, LM80 and TM21 calculations, and even lumen maintenance uh, factor tables that we might present on our spec sheets are based on everything else running correctly. Your product is slowly degrading just due to continuous use. So the lifetime of the actual product has, you know, obviously there's drivers involved. There might be some other components. Um, and so those have the opportunity to have issues or anything like that. So this is really only based on the light output performance expected and doesn't necessarily always uh, project, project out the life of the luminaire. Okay. And then the question I did find it here had to do with um, a luminaire useful life certificate. If we've, we've heard that and if, if useful life is shown in the, in the TM21 report. Um, so again, have you ever heard of a, a useful life certificate? Um, no, I have not, but effectively it really depends on your application. Um, you know, depending on how your product is designed, this is really only one data point or, you know, obviously maybe a number of data points, but ultimately one part of the total package of data that you need to design a good application and, and put the right luminaire or lamp in the, in the application that's gonna meet your needs. So, you know, a useful life might be different, you know, for a retail application where, um, you know, you may want you may 5% loss in light may affect your business. Whereas in an industrial application, maybe it wouldn't. Maybe you could go down to 80%. So those are all factors that have to be decided upon in the for the design itself. And one luminaire or one lamp might fit better into that application, you know, based on cost and lifetime and, you know, the different applications needs for color or um, you know maybe temperature rating for industrial applications. So those all come into play. So this is just one component that fits into you know kind of what that useful life would be for a lamp or luminaire. Yeah, I don't know if you want to touch on like driver. I think people are, are probably familiar with with the drivers, and maybe some people have even seen that as maybe the weakest link within some of their experience with products. So maybe how that can be projected. I think the other part of the, the system life, if you look at as I talk to customers, sometimes you kind of look at the warranty and understand that at least manufacturers are willing to to step up to the plate and say, we're going to warranty this fixture over, over this duration, which, you know, most, you know, respectful manufacturers are going to make certain that very few fixtures are falling, um, you know, short of that finish line. Yeah, obviously we have to, we, you know, when a warranty is generated, you know, whether it's five years or 10 years, um, you know, we have to put financial backing behind it. So we're, basically putting our money where our mouth is. Um, so those are, are very important aspects. And then um, from the driver aspect, you know, when we run through the temperature measurement test, the in-situ temperature measurement test for the LED components, 
the other major component that we validate is also the driver because those are the two what you know personally and in my experience are the two main components of both performance you know how well you're performing but also where you can fail uh, as a system and so we validate a TC point or a temperature measurement point on the driver when we do the same test as we check the LEDs and then we validate that against what the driver manufacturer has tested and and what they project their lifetime out to be so and that sliding curve may be you know if if the max temperature that driver could be at uh, and run is 85 degrees C and that's runs for 50,000 hours and that's their warranty or that's their lifetime projection you know and then we might run it at 75 C and then we expect a 65,000 hour life out of that uh, driver so depending on the application you know and and how much cost we want or you know what type of quality driver we want to put in a product that changes and is part of the system lifetime expectation for that product okay. we have a question and, th and this person probably didn't see last uh, Wednesday John you did we talked about the LM79 report and they're, they're trying to figure out is LM80 similar to to LM79 and maybe just a, a quick uh, blurb about LM79 reports, how they're different, and then and then the person with that question certainly you can go back and watch that LM79 content as well. Sure. So LM79 is a photometric report, uh, which uh, does come into play, I guess, for the LM80 because effectively you're you're running uh, to get the data, the the light data, the light output, the color quality. You're running similar tests every times zero, 500 hours, and 1,000 hours for the LM80 process. But that is a continuous process, so hours and hours of testing. Whereas an LM79 is really meant as a, as a static at one time, meaning typically time zero, prior to the product shipping out. And it categorizes how much light pr is produced, what the color of that light is, what the color quality or color rendering of that light is, uh, and possibly the distribution of that light. So they're they're used for two different aspects, but they do kind of help create that pantheon of data that we as manufacturers use to help support our spec sheets and communicate to our customers. Yeah, we, we have a question and, and one of the, the things is that, you know, we've seen these numbers if you've been in the industry for a while. When we launched product back in in 2007, uh, an L70 of 50,000 hours was pretty common. So that's gotten a lot better. But the question is is around the, kind of the controls uh, element of it and lumen maintenance uh, uh, values for luminaires around control systems. So certainly as you dim them, you're reducing the heat. Uh, is, is there any value in, in looking at data for that or we just know things get better when you dim? It, what you would do is you would look at um, possibly a typical dim state you know, an average dim state, because then you can project out, okay, we're running at, you know, we have a 100 watt fixture, but we really only run it at 75 watts, you know, kind of nominally. So that's where that control feature might come in. And then you can project out based on that temperature that you would run at 75 watts instead of your full power. Um, so those are those are factors that you can take into account Again, that's more, you know, typically we look at full power only on our spec sheets because, you know, we wanna, we wanna make sure that we're projecting out based on our kind of worst case scenario, but obviously controls help move you into a best case scenario or better case scenario where you can take advantage of that better lifetime because you're really not running everything as hard. And can you go back to maybe your previous slide? There's a question about just looking at that chart again. Um, the question says, so when we're looking at the ambient adjusted chart, are we looking at lumen factor over a certain period of time, i.e. 100,000 hours? Right. So here we have the different ambients. We have the uh, initial lumen factor. So what does that ambient do to the initial light output? So the, you know, in this case at 25C, it's running at 100% or 1. Um, and then you can see here 25,000 hours, 50,000 hours. This column is for 75 and then 100,000 hours. So here is that kind of that line or that curve that, is, that we showed earlier and graphically is now just numerically shown in this table of from one down to at 100,000 hours down to a, a really kind of an L79 
or 0.79 lumen maintenance factor. Okay. Um, let's see here. I think that's the last question we have. One thing I will mention on the LM, uh, on the, the, the table with the different temperatures, we do have a kind of a companion piece for that for the outdoor space that shows the average nighttime temperature. Uh, it's a map of the United States. So if you're doing a lighting design, you probably can find that weather data online as well, but we have a tool also that makes it pretty easy to look at in my part of the country, what's the average nighttime temperature and, and, and using um, you know, the right number there within that, within that design tool. All right, John, do you wanna go to the last slide and I'll close up shop then? So again, I wanna I want thank John, for you for your time and, and certainly the audience for joining us today. Our, our next live session will be on, on Friday. We'll talk a little bit about SmartCast and some expanded opportunities and value there. On Monday, our design session will be around industrial. And then uh, John will be joining us again next Wednesday as we uh, look uh, deeper into the, the DLC and gain a, a greater understanding there. Um, again, all the sessions are being recorded. If you go to the Cree Lighting YouTube channel, uh, there's, there's basically a playlist that shows all the e-learning sessions we've done. Uh, so the LM79 content will, will be found there as well as all the other sessions we've done previously. If you haven't already subscribed, we'd also encourage you to subscribe to, to stay uh, up to date on all the the, the content that is being released um, through the YouTube channel. So with that, I wanna thank everybody for your time and uh, have a great week, everyone. Thank you.